Good day everyone and welcome to another creative episode. Thank you all for joining me. Absolute pleasure to be here with you today. In today's episode I wanted to address what are the most frustrating aspects of painting with a palette knife. Now if you haven't gone into my community tab on my YouTube channel I decided to create a small quiz just to find out what your frustrations are and basically just give you some direction into how I worked around those um, frustrations and what processes helped me. So if you haven't had an opportunity do check in from time to time on my community tab and you'll see I'll post quizzes and also um, get some ideas on what exactly you would like to see going forward with some of the videos. So the discussion today is really to two points, wanting to um, dive into the frustrating aspects of palette knife painting. The first one, which is where majority of you voted, it's that the paint is too oily. 25% of you voted basically to say that you cannot handle painting with broad strokes and making definitive marks and I'll address those as well. But let's dive into the paint is too oily. Now I've made a couple of um, notes so I'm hoping to give you as much detail as possible. First off you're using cheap oil paint. Not all tools are meant or created the same. We need to come to terms with that. Now, I, I do want to acknowledge that paint is not cheap, particularly in today's market. It is an, you know, an eye gouging um, time at the um, checkout. Believe me, I went into the art shop not long ago and it was almost like I walked into another alternate parallel reality. But the actual truth of it all is that paint and good quality paint makes an absolute huge difference and this is because there's a ratio a really good balance between the oil that they use and the pigment ratio. Now some oil brands do use uh, natural oils into their um, paint and also natural pigments. This of course makes them a lot more vibrant in colour and texture wise they are a lot better to paint with. If you're going to a brand that we've got here in Australia, Artist Quality Paint, which I think called um, Art Spectrum, my apologies, Art Spectrum Paint, they have a white, a titanium white, which has a, a far more thicker, I don't know what exactly in it, but it is a, a thicker white paint. This means it feels like a, a little bit thawed out butter. So when you paint with it, you can add and create that texture. So you have to find out exactly, you know, what paint you use and the quality of paint. And unfortunately, you have to upgrade. This makes a huge difference. Also, I would encourage everybody to don't go out and spend money on different tubes of color of paint. You only need three primaries, your blue, red and yellow and white. From those primary colors, you are able to mix any color that you choose. It then really comes down to spending time learning how to mix tones, shades, different values and believe me when I tell you, you will not be able to, will you not want to buy any other color other than your primary colors. So quality paint makes a big difference. Now the other part of why, let's assume that you've all gone out and purchased your good quality paint. Why is it that it's too oily? There are different types of canvases, canvas as in material canvas that's been gessoed, paper canvas, there's craft paper that you can gesso yourself. What this means is that a lot of these different material backgrounds, such as what you see behind me up here, they have a different absorption level for the oil. There's a couple of poor quality boards that are out there on the marketplace, which means basically they don't absorb any of the oil. It just sits on the surface. So when you go to layer and create textures and build upon your subject matter, the board or the oil basically sits on top of the board and it starts to run. And that also creates a very oily factor in your painting process, which makes it incredibly difficult to paint with a knife and to build layers. The other aspect of having your paint or the paint that you use on your, on your board of choice 
is that people use too much medium. Now, I don't use any medium in my paint. I have turpentine, odorless turpentine, basically to clean any of the brushes that I use, but I don't add any medium to my oil paint. This is purely because the paint that I do use is incredibly high grade paint, incredible quality. But medium is really a detriment, in my opinion, when painting with a palette knife. So I really come back to the, you know, to the beginning, to the foundations of art. Use good quality paint. I can't harp on about it. The first class that I went to talked about this and they basically, I rocked up at the class with a variety of different greens and, and flesh tones and reds and oranges. I spent a lot of money you know, getting myself prepared. When I went to the class, the tutor simply said, you just need three tubes. You need to learn how to mix color. This is imperative. So I hope that's kind of given you a bit more of an idea of how to now avoid that process of your paint being too oily. In conclusion to all of that, ultimately the final aspect is technique. You have to practice Practice, 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 daily practice, daily paint will get you quicker to unraveling your technique, to unraveling the process of how to use a palette knife. If you're only painting haphazardly once every two months, once every three months, this doesn't give you enough of an opportunity to figure out what you did wrong today and how you can improve on that the following day and build up on that process. So painting daily is imperative. I might do a video eventually and show you guys how I started to paint. I've got some of the artworks that I've saved from literally 20 years ago. And I found, even though, you know, many people might say, yeah, technically it's great, I wasn't satisfied with it. So I, I persisted and I continued painting daily, what I call my bad art, but really it's my learning art. And once I understood what didn't work for me, I started to look, like, uh, look for and search for what would work for me. So paint daily, practice daily, even if it's just for you. You don't have to go and sell it. You don't have to go and approach a gallery. Every painting is a nugget towards getting you to not only understand how to paint, but teach you about yourself in how you would like to paint. The other aspect of why you're finding it difficult to paint with a palette knife, which is where 25% of you voted on, is that you cannot adapt to broad or definitive or immediate brush, or brush, pardon me, palette knife strokes. There's a couple of reasons behind this. First of, there's the psychological reason, and this is what I found with myself. When I started to paint, I had an idea of what a painting should look like, and that idea was based on other people's expectations, meaning what the external marketplace would find attractive or what they would find that it was good art or whatever definition you have, I guarantee you, you have that foundation, that undercurrent wanting you to paint like that. So psychologically, there's a barrier between um, allowing your authentic self to come out versus the expectation of the external marketplace. So what we tend to do is that we tend to want to stay in that safe zone and we tend to want to produce art that to us, again, whatever that definition is, feels safe. Strange, but it's actually what uh, we tend to do in the back of our minds and it's unfortunately what translates within our hand and finally onto the canvas. So what's the takeout in how to get broader strokes? If you are an artist that wants detail, that wants to totally and utterly put even every eyelash on a portrait, then you might have to reconsider your palette knife process. And that comes back to figuring out the why and the how. Why do you paint? What's the purpose behind why do you paint? The how will then come easy, meaning what are the emotions of why you want to paint that particular subject? Why do you want to express yourself in that way? Once you understand that, the how will say, well, you should use this brush or you should use this palette knife or you should then get, you know, create this broad mark. That will then come quite easily once you allow yourself the 
how, the, the why you're doing what you're doing. My reason of why I paint is to capture the emotion. Notice that in my definition of why I paint, there is no discussion of how a tree looks like, how water reflects, what eyes look like. Yes, you have to have a technical component, but really my why is based and rooted in the emotion of my subject matter. So when I connect to someone's energy and I totally immerse myself into the feeling of my subject, it becomes an incredibly easy extension to then move quickly and paint because I don't want to lose that feeling. I don't want to lose the expression of that emotion. Now I then, through because I practice so many times in daily painting, what I figured out for me is how that language or our emotional language can be translated through movement of the palette. So a, a quick motion, a short motion, a flick of the wrist. This is a pattern, it's all language. And it's that pattern that I then placed onto the canvas. So my why is really an undercurrent of emotion. And I focus to quickly capture that before I lose that, not necessarily lose it, but before I tune into the next and the next and the next. What I'll do for you in the next part of this video is show you how to see broader strokes or broader shapes from your image. And I'll break apart an image and show you how I learned to see those strokes. And once I had that image in my brain and was able to decipher what those strokes look like, it was an easy translation from my mind through my arm and then with the palette knife forward. So figuring out why you like to paint and the reason that you do it, the how will come in quite easy. Now this comes down to really being vulnerable and allowing our full authentic self to come through our artworks because at the end of the day, that's what they are. They are an extension of who we are. So our inner selves made visible on the external canvas. Let's have a look at this landscape. Our minds are wired to interpret and decipher objects. This is a landscape with a shallow stream with undulating hills. If we change our perspectives and we then turn this landscape upside down, now we are more focused on identifying shapes versus a hill, a tree or water. Let's break down the different shapes on this image based on color, tones and background, foreground and middle ground. Now I'm demonstrating this process via a software program. You could equally do this with a physical copy of a photograph and scissors. So let's isolate some sections. If I focus on the right hand side as I zoom up here of this um, image, this area up here, uh, based on color alone, I will separate and I can see three different sections. So let's do that right now. Here's section one up here. And by the way, this is very quickly, so you can take your time when you do it at home. And the other section that I can see for me is based on the more ochre yellow part. So there's the other one here. And the lighter sections, which is this part up here. Now, if I continue to do this, of course, what will start to happen is that I will be creating a pile of color in various shapes. Our landscape, as we know it, as our brain knows it, is slowly now starting to disappear. So let me quickly do that as well. So again, I'll take this particular shape up here and again, move it across. And let's isolate this darker portion of the water and move that across as well. Here's another shape on this section up here. Again, move that across. You can start to see that as I've now um, taken out some of the major shapes within that landscape, it really no longer resembles a landscape, simply a variation of different angles and different rectangles that are now part of this landscape, which is giving us the idea how to begin our painting using the palette knife. You can break down each section into more shapes as well. So for example, if we go into these particular smaller 
um, objects that we've put aside you can then you know refine that particular section as well so for example you know you can then look at this area too and this is a lighter in tone and again that you can isolate that particular area you, if you wanted to further isolate this section too because that's a little bit darker you can do that as well and ultimately what this ends up really is like an a, a big puzzle um, and so I tend to then look for blocks of color when I paint my subject matter versus identify objects by their traditional um, understandings like a tree or, or the sky. I mean, let's dive deeper again. Let's, if I then take this background section of the mountain um, and again move it to the side, let's look at this thick clump, which is quite dark in color, move that to the side. You can start to now see that it's really become an area of looking at different colors different shapes and this is really what you then begin to paint with your palette knife again remember you can go into this particular uh, portion of the landscape and isolate more areas like this particular one here is a lot darker and we can move that to the side as well so it really is about teaching yourself how to see and then from that point forward that's where you're going to paint because when you're looking at this area really you can't even identify what that is you allow your palette knife to make that mark versus in your mind think well is it a leaf is it a tree is it water what is it so it's all about keeping it simple let's imagine that I'm now painting with my palette knife and there's an image that I've isolated from my landscape Looking at this section, we can isolate values and color in a lot more details as well. So for example, you can see this section up here is a lot lighter. Then there's a darker rectangular shape. We've got almost like an oblong style shape, which is a, a purple or a light, light purple in color. Um, we've got a triangular shape at the bottom here. And the more you look at this scene, the more you can dissect it into further and further color tones of values and shapes. Now, I'm going to do this fairly quickly, um, but this exercise is very good to also learn how to mix tones when you are in your studio. And again, keep in mind, this is me demonstrating via an electronic um, uh, program. So it's not going to exactly be the same, but I just want you to get the idea how you would apply the palette knife. Okay, so if I look at this particular shape here, then what I would do is make this mark um, of this particular shape and again notice to the, the direction that it's going and that is um, going in this direction up here so it's an upside down motion then we switch to the pale purple or the blue but in this case it's um, coming up as a gray on my electronic program um, the further I go in then I can see we've got this particular brown shape or a rectangular shape in there, which I would convert into a brown color. Okay, there we go. So the next value down we have is this particular section up here. Again, um, keeping it fairly simple. That didn't change. Okay, so keeping it fairly simple. I'd make this particular mark as well. So I'm following this contour of this shape. And then again, there's a triangle there. Um, that's another shape that I can see, which I can make that way too. There we go. So the more that I look at this scene, the more that I can um, understand and see that it's got different values, different color tones. And really, um, this is the way that I would then use my palette knife in order to, to dissect um, how and what colors I use in the shapes that I make. So I've just changed that to a, a more paler blue and that would, you know, go into that particular area there. There we go. So if I zoom out, I mean, not that that makes any sense right now, but you can kind of understand that this is how the palette knife would behave simply just looking at that particular area there. So painting with the palette knife, whilst it looks like it hasn't got any direction or that it's not as detailed in actual fact, you do focus on a lot of the detail as I've uh, 
zoom in here by by understanding each different section and each colors and values that you paint you start to see how the palette knife would behave by moving you know side to side up and down and then obviously blending and creating these soft edges in order to make that particular area of your painting seem like water is flowing so I've just spent a little bit of time blending in this um, section, so making it a little bit more seem like it is water. But what I wanted to show you is let's now take this um, image that we drew. Again, pretend that it's the real palette knife, but let me just um, cut that out. And I want to show you what it looks like if we were to place that into our landscape. So if I then take that with me and pop it in here, you can now, I hope, understand and see how this uh, process of isolating shapes and then further um, going into each section and isolating values and shapes and color, you can achieve your better understanding in how to paint with a palette knife. I mean, you can do this for every single section in this landscape, um, this particular section, the front section, the background section. And like I said, if you don't have an electronic uh, program that you can work with, please do this with scissors and a physical copy um, or a photocopy of this scene or whatever scene you want to paint. Keep it simple, by the way. This is how I started 20 years ago. I didn't have anything electronic. I simply got a photograph. I cut it into different shapes and then practiced and went into the studio to learn how to mix color tones and applied it back into my painting. It's a tedious process, yes, however, well worth learning. So have a go at learning how to see shapes. Maybe get an old photograph and cut it into different sections and, and you'll see how I did that and place it on a table. Mix those shapes about just like a puzzle piece and then you start to see that really that subject matter is just comprised of different sections. That should give you enough of a clue then how to assess your next landscape and by the way landscapes are the easiest format in how to learn to see different shapes. Turn those shapes upside down. This also breaks the um, visual paradigm of how a subject should look like. Meaning, if you turn a, a landscape upside down, your mind doesn't recognize it as a landscape. Now it's, you know, the, the sky is down here, the earth is up there. It doesn't have the traditional idea of what we interpret as a view of a landscape. Same thing with portraits and people, turn them upside down. When you do that, you are now focusing on the different directions and movements versus how am I going to paint the leaf on the tree? So you get away from the detail. This really is a process of training the mind and it does need and requires that you do it daily and that you practice this. Even if it's sitting down and sketching, not necessarily using your oil paint, it's just giving yourself the opportunity to move out of the detail and now recognize the patterns within each different section of your subject matter. Start small. Don't be discouraged and certainly do not allow your doubt and your critical mind to not get you into your studio. It really is easy to not do something, but I tell you with an absolute determined heart that you can do it. It's just a matter of you getting yourself into your room or wherever your art studio or your art, creative art space is. And I guarantee you, everybody can paint. Every single person is able to paint with a knife if that's what you desire and or see shapes. It's about conditioning the way you see things and it's about conditioning the synapses in your brain and changing that perspective of how you used to seeing things and now seeing it in a new way. Again, I encourage you all to, from time to time, check into the community tab of the, my YouTube channel. I will put there a lot more different uh, quizzes or polls and see what you guys would like to see next and certainly get an idea of how I can help you going forward. I think
thank you with all my heart for tuning in. Remember, while you are in this world, you are the light of the world. Your authenticity matters, who you are matters, and certainly use every single moment that you can to ignite creativity and amplify more of your authentic self. Happy painting, everybody. Until next time, bye.